The diagonal above shows a sketch of the curve C with the equation y equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 multiplied by e to the power minus x. Part A. Find the coordinates of the points where the curve C crosses the y-axis. So when it crosses the y-axis when x equals 0. So if I substitute 0 into the formula, I'll get y equals 2 times 0 squared minus 5 times 0 plus 2 times e to the power minus 0. Which gives 2 times e to the power 0, which is 2. So that's the coordinate 0, 2. That's my answer to part A. Part B, show that the curve C crosses the x-axis at x equals 2 and finds the x-coordinate of the other point where the curve C crosses the x-axis. So I know it crosses the x-axis when y equals 0. So let me take my curve and make that equal to 0. Now I know that the exponential <clears throat> can never equal 0. So I can divide both sides by that and just consider the quadratic. When does 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 equal 0? Which we can solve by factorising. That's going to have to be a minus 2 and a minus 1. So we find that x is either equal to 1 half or x is equal to 2. 2 was what we needed to show and 1 half must be the other point. Part C, find dy by dx. So we need to differentiate this. To do so, we need to use the product rule because we've got two functions. We've got the quadratic and then we've got the exponential. So let me call the quadratic my u function. And the exponential can be my v function. So u dash differentiating this, the 2x squared differentiates to be 4x, the minus 5x differentiates to be minus 5. Now differentiating the v function, the exponential differentiates to be the exponential, but by the chain rule I need to multiply by minus 1 because that's the coefficient, the minus 1 there, that's the coefficient of the x. So I'm multiplying by minus 1. So remember that the product rule says it's u dash v plus v dash u. So applying that in this case, my u dash, oops, my u dash v will be 4x minus 5 multiplied by e to the minus x plus the v dash u. I can factorise the exponential term outside just to make this a bit simpler. I don't actually have to do this for part C. Um, part C just says find dy by dx. But I'm going to do it anyway because I'm going to need to do what I'm about to do for part D. And it's, you know, it's good. It's a good thing for mathematicians to do to simplify as they're going along. So I'm going to factorise this exponential outside to begin with. Which will leave me with a 4x minus 5. And then I've got this quadratic times by the minus 1. So I'll get a minus 2x squared plus 5x minus 2. So then that simplifies like so. So that's my answer for part C. 
And then part D, hence find the exact coordinates of the turning points. I know that is when my gradient is equal to zero. That's where I have turning points. Again, similar to what I did before, I know that I can divide both sides by the exponential because I know that can't equal zero. So the only answers I will get is where the quadratic is equal to zero, which I can write in a nicer form and then factorize. It's going to be a seven, that's going to be a minus seven and a minus one. So I get that either x is one or x is seven over two. Those are my two x coordinates. And then I can substitute each of those back into the original equation. This here. To work out what the y coordinates would be. When I substitute 7 over 2 into that, so I'll have 2 times 7 over 2 squared minus 5 times 7 over 2 plus 2 times e to the minus 7 over 2. That gives me the answer 9e to the minus 7 over 2. And then when I substitute 1 in, I get the answer y equals minus e to the minus 1. So just as coordinates then, 7 over 2. That's one coordinate. And the other coordinate is that. These are my two answers for part 